Uh, the first thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to say welcome and thank you to this uh, to the Kentucky Teachers in the Know for being able and um, hosting something like this in a time like this. Uh, this is definitely a challenge for all of us and several of us are here just to be able to help you in any possible way that we can. So for today, um, my name is Holly Ackerman and I am an early childhood education consultant for KET. And today what I'm going to share with you are some of the games and apps that are available from PBS Kids. Hey Lynn. Hey Amanda. Um, all right, so um, I am going to be sharing several sites, but don't worry because at the end of this, once this is actually posted, um, I will um, post all of the links that I'm sharing into the comments so you can catch them later, so don't worry about any of that. So the first thing I'm going to begin with is the PBS Kids uh, main site. So as you can see, right here in the middle, there is a dial. So if your child has a favorite PBS Kids character, you can always um, find it here. You can move this dial anyway, and as you can see, you can find um, some old shows as well as some of the newer shows. Now on this main page, you can see um, over here to the left, there is a way that you can look at videos. But what I'm actually gonna concentrate on today is actually looking at the games. So I'm gonna click on the games button over here to the side. Hopefully my internet's not too slow today. So you can see up here at the top of it, one of the things that they do is that they highlight uh, several different games each day. Um, so if you're looking for, this one kind of functions in the same, that you can see these little radio buttons here in the middle. So if you're looking for a particular character or show or anything like that, you can find those um, right here using these radio buttons if you're looking for something specific. Um, one of the things that I really like about this site is the way that they group the games together. Um, so if you scroll on down here, you can see that um, it's, it, they've got categories for new games, um, for popular games, teamwork games. Um, one of the other things that you can see down here um, towards the bottom is one that says more topics. So you can click on where it says more topics down here underneath that. And as you can see, there are tons of categories. So if you're looking for something specific, maybe you're looking for a spelling game or you're looking for um, something your child is working on their shapes. And so you're looking for a shapes game. You can find that right here. Um, so there's all sorts of different things that the way that they've categorized it. So for example, let's look at dog games. So when you pull this up, these are all games, as you can see. Now most of these, this particular one was probably not a good example to click on, but I'll go back in a second. Um, all of these are particularly from Martha Speaks, or there's one that's down here from Arthur. Um, let me show you one that's a little bit better of an example of what I was looking for. For example, engineering games. So engineering games, they'll highlight a game here at the top, just like they've done before. And then as you can see, there are all these other games down here at the bottom. And they range from um, simple games like uh, Sid the Science Kid all the way up to something a little more complex like Sci Girls. Um, so if you're not real familiar uh, uh, with the PBS Kids characters or their properties or their shows, don't worry about that. I'm actually going to show you a resource towards the end of this that um, you can find that's gonna be very useful to you if you're not very familiar with all of the properties and kind of knowing where to start um, when you're looking for something. All right, so one of the things I wanna do as well is I'm gonna go back to the very first page. Um, down here at the bottom, there's also, if you're looking, if your kid's a little older and you're looking for some things that are a little bit more challenging, um, underneath this heading, hard games, they've even got them rated by lightning bolts. Um, so you can see that some of these are really uh, difficult. So they've got three lightning bolts all the way down to two or maybe even one lightning bolt for something that's a little easier. So the cool thing about this is that, um, as I mentioned, there are all sorts of ways that you can look for the, uh, different games by topic or um, by character. So the next thing that I'm actually gonna move on to are the apps. 
So in this particular, as you can see, this is on this page. This particular page actually highlights apps. It highlights eBooks. It highlights music albums. So just in case you didn't know, on something like Spotify, you can find a PBS Kids playlist to listen to if that's something that you're interested in. And it also highlights podcasts. Um, so you can come on this site and find a lot of great resources um, in particular. Now, what again I'm going to focus in on are looking at the apps. So as you can see, that as it's scrolling along here, um, this has got some, it'll be highlighting new games, um, maybe some more popular games or that type of thing are going to be scrolling along here at the top. Down here towards the bottom, um, you can see them categorized um, in here by popular apps. So there's all sorts of different apps that you can look for. I'm not going to highlight um, all of these. I am going to talk about a couple of them just to kind of point them out so that you can kind of know what's out there um, and the range that's available. One thing I did want to point out before I move from this page is up here at the top. Um, it's got this drop-down list and this particular drop-down list can be very useful to you if you're looking for a app or something for a particular platform. So if you have an iPhone or you have an iPad or you have a Kindle, whatever type of device that you have, this drop-down is going to be very useful to you so that you can look up the apps that are particular to that device. Um, you can also go to uh, whatever app store that you purchased your apps from and um, be able to find what's available in the app store. Now there's a couple of things that we really like to mention when we talk about um, the PBS Kids apps. Um, one of the things is, is that uh, many of them are free. I'm going to show you a list here in just a little bit of all of the free apps that they have available. Um, even the ones that are paid apps, typically um, they're three dollars or under, so most of them are very low cost, even with that. Uh, the other thing that we really, really like to highlight is the fact that um, with the exception of the PBS Kids video app, and the reason um, for that one is that particular app is a constant uh, stream of our 24-7 channel, as well as constant stream of um, the different episodes and things that you can watch. But with the exception to that app, once you uh, download any of these apps, you no longer need Wi-Fi or a constant uh, data stream in order to be able to use them. So that is really useful to families, especially if you're working, if you maybe don't have Wi-Fi at home or um, you're, you're using your iPhone and you don't want to use your, your data plan or whatever the case may be, um, that's really useful because then you can take these games on the go and you do not have to be using that constant um, data or Wi-Fi in order to be able to use it. Now, the only exception, like I said, of course, is the video app. The other piece of that, the exception, would be on occasion there are some um, updates that are done to these apps, uh, just like any other app, to make them um, better or to add more games or any of those kind of things. Um, so you might want to just periodically um, connect it back just so that you can see if there have been any updates to that particular app. So there, I'm going to highlight three particular ones um, that I really kind of like. Um, again, I would highly encourage you to take a look at several of these um, because all of them are great apps. All of them are backed by PBS. All of them have the research behind them. Um, so you know that PBS is the trusted name and these are um, also trusted. So let's take a look at first, we're going to look at the Play and Learn Science app. Now this particular app, I like it for a lot of reasons. Um, this app has 15 mini games in it, and in those mini games it covers um, earth science, physical science, life science. Um, so one of the little mini apps or mini games that's within this app is one called uh, Thirsty Doggy, and that seems to be one that's really popular with the little ones. Now this is kind of geared for three to f um, kids three to five. 
And so that thirsty doggy, they actually have to think about, um, they have to look at how they're going to get the water to the dog. And it actually, even for an adult, can be a little challenging in some of the uh, higher levels. So it's really interesting the way that this is built. Um, the other piece of this app that I really, really like is highlighted under here under key features. Um, this has a complete section that's in it that talks about how parents and caregivers can engage their children in extending the learning that is occurring in this app um, into the real world. So there's a, there are many games that are talking about sink and float. There are also ways that you can incorporate sink and float into your real world and be doing experiments and things like that um, in your own environment to take a look at that. Um, so this one also is available in English and Spanish. Many of the apps that are available have that capability. It's usually just a click of a button at the top of it to change it from English to Spanish. Um, so it's fairly easy to use. Uh, the next app that I, I was going to highlight is um, a fairly new app as well. This one is called Ready, Jet, Go Space, Sc Space Scouts. Um, this particular app is geared for a little bit older children, great for elementary school children. Um, it also has many games that are within it. But the cool thing that um, about this particular app is that it has um, five unique STEM focus games. So that's science, technology, engineering, and math type of games and it also um, awards children badges but it's not just awarding them badges for playing the games the cool thing about this one is they can earn badges such as a designing differently badge for solving problems in a unique way so it awards them for being able to use those critical thinking skills to think through uh, a different way that maybe it wasn't presented at first um, there's also a curiosity badge that can be um, can be awarded and this particular badge is using a magnifying glass to inspect something a little bit closer so again it uses critical thinking skills as they travel through and they're um, playing with all of Jet and his friends. So again, this one um, has all sorts of different, I'm not uh, going to go over every single one of these, but I do highly encourage you again to go back through and take a look at these. Um, one of the other ones that I will highlight um, really quickly here, especially for little ones, is this Daniel Tiger for Parents app. This is a real popular one. So Daniel Tiger, if you don't know, Daniel Tiger is um, based off of Fred Rogers. And so it is based off of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Um, Daniel himself is actually the son of Daniel Tiger, um, the, the one that I grew up with, and I'm sure most of you all did too. Um, and in this particular um, character and, and show, it talks a lot about social emotional learning and how he does that a lot of times are using catchy little songs. And in this particular app, you can revert or you can go back and take a look at all of these types of little miniature songs or video clips. And it also has conversation starters so that parents can have difficult conversations with their, their children. Um, there's even an episode of Daniel Tiger um, that's really similar to when um, in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, it mirrors it when the fish passed away. And so it talks about things like that, or it talks about um, learning how to go to the bathroom, or it talks about um, what to do when you're really angry and you're wanting to hit everything in sight and how to de-escalate yourself from that. So Daniel Tiger really does help children think through all of those um, type of processes. Um, the last one that I'm going to mention is this PBS Kids Games app. Now, I showed you at the beginning the pbskids.org uh, games page. Now, in that, I, as, I, as I showed you, there are a bunch of little mini games. Well, this is actually quite similar to that. So, a lot of the games that you're able to find on the PBS Kids uh, website, you're going to be able to find in this games app. Now this app functions a little differently. Um, so you would download this app and then within the app, there are, I don't know how many, cause they add new games to this app quite frequently. Um, how many little mini games that are available within the app. 
And in order to use it um, away from Wi-Fi or um, away from a data plan, what you would do is you would download each one of those individual games that you're interested for your child to have. Now this does, um, it does cover the gamut. So this, this is for, um, this does include games for little children from two to three all the way up to age eight. Um, so it's got lots of different, you'll see all of your favorite PBS kids characters within this game. Um, so again, most of the games that you're able to find online, you can find within this games app as well. All right, so remember that I told you that there was a great resource that you could use that would be helpful to you um, if you're not quite familiar with all of the PBS Kids characters and shows and all of that type of thing. And believe me, don't worry about it because I really wasn't either. Um, my kids are a little older, and so I kind of missed this little block of time um, between when my youngest uh, was a PBS Kids kid uh, to when my oldest um, was that. So I had this little block of time that I kind of missed. Um, so this right here has been very useful even to me. Um, but you can find it on the KET website. Uh, again, don't worry about trying to take down any of these links. I will be sure to put them in the comments when I get done. Um, but the first thing that we're gonna, I'm gonna show you is we're gonna talk about the learning goals the learning goal sheet. So this particular sheet, this one right here, um, gives the information, as you can see, there are content area listed. So social emotional learning, STEM learning, literacy, social studies and arts, all of the, um, and, and different ones listed here. So within those big headings, you're gonna see three columns. So the first column is gonna tell you the name of the PBS Kids show or property. And so you can see Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, the first one listed right here, Daniel Tiger Neighborhood. The second column here that's listed, that is the target age range um, that that particular show is kind of looking at. Now, in saying that, we all know that children develop differently. Children are at different levels. Children may be um, a little bit below that, in between that, above that, all the, the gamut. So use this kind of as a guideline. You know your kids best and you know what they um, can do. You know what, um, how you want to challenge them or how that they need to be challenged. And so I would just encourage you to use that kind of middle column as a guide. Um, this last column there, it's gonna give you a little bit more focused area. So now this one, it just says social emotional learning, but as you can see right here underneath that, like for Sesame Street, for example, it not only covers social emotional learning, but literacy, math, and Spanish, or some of the other content areas that that particular show also covers. So you're also going to notice that there's a little box down here at the end. It says 24-7 channel. And so what that means is that the, the show itself is only available on the KET PBS Kids 24-7 channel. Um, so I can show you, uh, you can access that channel online. You can also access that on your TV at home. Um, so again, that that's what that 24-7 channel means. The next sheet that I'm gonna go over is talking about the apps. So we looked at a, just a very few of the apps that are available. Um, now you're gonna see on this one, this looks very similar to the sheet that we were just looking at. Um, however, it does, um, it's got two sides. So the first side talks about the free apps. The second side talks about the paid apps but it functions very much the same as what you saw on the other one. So it's got the larger content areas, social emotional development, literacy, arts and creativity, etc. cetera. Um, and it's got the same three columns. Now the first column, instead of being the particular um, PBS Kids show, it's gonna give you the name of the PBS Kids app. Again, that second column is that target age range also a guide just to think about so that you can know kind of where if you're looking for something but you know, don't know quite where to start you can also see right there um, use that age range as a guide and then that very last column again gives a little bit more um, in-depth look at what type of content area that that's covering so for example under literacy here we've got Molly of Denali her target age range is four to eight and then her her kind of overarching um, content area is looking at informational text. So that's just giving you an example. 
Um, now it's got two in here in the middle box uh, that you're going to see. That's the games app and the video app. And the reason that they put that under multiple learning is again because there are so many different areas that both of those cover. Um, because they're offering everything um, from every show. So it kind of, it covers all of these areas. Now you're gonna see like over here um, on the right, it's got a little pink box that says iOS only. So if you see that, what that particular um, is, what that is indicating is that it is only available for something on an Apple product. So we're talking an iPhone or an iPad, and that's the only thing that that, that particular app will run on. Um, as you can see, there's not very many of those. Um, most of them are available for multiple platforms. Um, as you can see now um, on the second page, as I mentioned, you can see that it looks very much the same way, but this is just talking about the paid apps um, that are here. All right, um, last but not least, one of the things that I wanted to mention, I'm going back to the very uh, top or very first page that I uh, shared with you. One of the things that PBS Kids recently started doing as of last week was sending out a daily um, PBS Kids newsletter. So on the very top of this page, you can sign up for the newsletter. I'll show you how to get to that. Um, in, so this is just a very simple sign up page, as you can see. Um, so this has activities, daily activities. I'm gonna show you show you the example of what um, the newsletter look like today so that you can kind of see. Um, it's free to sign up. It's totally free that you'll, like I said, you'll be receiving this each and every day. Um, at the top of it, it always has a watch. And in this watch, what it does, it actually gives you the link right here. You can click on it. It gives you the link to a particular episode. It also gives you questions and discussion questions that you and your children can have together while watching um, this episode so that you're engaged in their learning as they are watching the episode or you can ask them afterwards. There's always some sort of hands-on um, activity that's listed in this as well. In this case for today, they're talking about building and testing paper bridges. So um, most of the activities that are listed in here are things that you're already going to have at home. So this, for, for example, it shows using books, paper, and pennies that are laying around. And so you can figure out and test, does construction paper hold more than regular notebook paper? Um, which one held the least? All of those type of things. So this gives a hands-on experience that you can um, do every day. Then at the bottom, it just got some extra resources, maybe an article from PBS uh, Parents, and another, another couple of games, or an activity that you all can do together. All right, so I really hope that you all, as I mentioned, I um, hope you enjoyed this. I hope that you've learned a lot. I know I covered a lot in a very short period of time. Um, as I mentioned, I am gonna make sure that once this gets posted, I will go back and add every single one of these links um, into the comments so that you can catch them there. Um, we at KET are here to help you in any way that we can. So if you have a question or you're looking for a resource, don't hesitate to reach out. Um, we'll be able, um, we'll help you in any possible way that we can. Have a good day.